Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. Americans are in love with pizza. And each region of America has its own specific style of variety that it touts as their own. One of the pizzas that's caught my interest is Detroit style pizza. Their pizza is known for a specific ingredient. And of course, that ingredient comes from right here in Wisconsin. So today, we're on our way to Tereso to meet with master cheesemaker Joe Widmer and his son, Joey to get the skinny on what makes this Motown pizza so fantastic. I am a Joey Widmer. I'm a fourth generation cheesemaker here at Widmer's Cheese Cellars, uh, located in Teresa, Wisconsin. My great grandfather started the business in 1922, and uh, it's 2021, so we're in our 99th year of business. Next year, we will be celebrating uh, 100 years in operation. The main cheese that we're known for, uh, where we gain our notoriety from, would be the brick cheese. Brick was invented in Dodge County, in the same county where our factory is located. And that was invented in the 1870s by a Swiss uh, immigrant named John Yassi. So what makes it a uh, brick would be the, the bricks that are used to press the cheese. Basically, the brick is used to press the curds together, knit the curds together, and form the curds into a, a block. These are uh, special bricks. They're called baking bricks. So they're not the kind of bricks that you'd want to uh, use to build a house. They're completely different. They weigh a little bit over five pounds, but they're actually coated with a material that basically can be used for the food industry. My great grandfather's been using these bricks since 1922. Obviously some have been replaced in the uh, 99 years that uh, we've been in business. So. Brick cheese is gaining some notoriety throughout the United States, and I would say, you know, some of that notoriety is due to the increase in demand for Detroit style pizza. A requirement of Detroit style pizza would be that it has the brick cheese on it. I found my path here in cheese making, I was basically uh, born into it. I literally grew up above the cheese factory. There's an apartment attached, which was very traditional, very common for older cheese factories to have the living quarters attached right to the factory itself. My dad means a lot to this business because, you know, he decided to carry it on from the second generation to the third. He really grew the business from the second generation. I think it's very important to preserve the history and tradition of cheese making in general, and then just the history of, of this place. If we steer away from that tradition, then we steer away from the history, and it loses some of that uh, sentimental value that should be carried over as long as possible. Another day, another hairnet, and uh, this is nothing new for you, correct? Oh no, I've been doing it all my life since I'm a kid, yeah. So we are with cheesemaker Joe Widmer, and we are standing next to the namesake of the cheese that has made this town famous. What cheese are we talking about here? This is brick cheese, invented in Wisconsin in the 1870s by a Swiss immigrant. Germans were the first ones to come to Wisconsin, in the late 1800s, they brought the cows, so the Swiss, Italian, and French cheesemakers went where the milk was, Wisconsin. So he had to make something they would eat, brick cheese. So when my grandpa moved in uh, 1922 and bought this plant, he had to make something Germans would eat too because he is surrounded by Germans. Well, to make this cheese, this John Yossi that invented it would put the curds to a form. It looked like cottage cheese at that point, and he'd put a brick on top, brick cheese. Not only is the cheese the shape of a brick, but it got the name by being pressed like a brick. Our product's so authentic that when my grandpa bought the plant, he bought bricks. We're still using the bricks my grandfather used in 1922. Authentic recipes make better cheese. So these are the same bricks that your grandpa brought with him. Here's what really is striking to me about this, right? There have been so many advancements in the cheesemaking world over the last, let's say, 50 years. Yep. And yet this is still so intentional. It's very deliberate. You're putting one brick on one mold and you're letting it sit and then you pull it off to go to the next step. Right. So tomorrow morning at 4.30, after this cheese sits overnight and does some more ripening, we'll take it back to this uh, salt brine back here. Okay. Salt brine it up. 
Oh my gosh, look at this. Yep. This is incredible. Yeah, these are cement brines and they've been fiberglassed. Uh, they're grandfathered. Uh, most of them nowadays are just fiberglass. And you can see how old the walls are here. Right. This is one of the oldest parts of the building. The streets up there, because underground is where you cure your cheese. Underground and in, in uh, curing rooms. So, like, as I told you, this is the cheese that was pressed yesterday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then at 4.30 this morning, these guys put it in the salt brine. What this is is a 90% salt solution. What it does is give the cheese flavor and acts as a preservative. Uh, the cheese stays in here about 11 hours, and then it goes to a curing room where the surface is washed. Uh, bacteria grows on the surface of this type of brick, and uh, it's, it's washed about 10 days, then it's packaged in foil. It continues to age, reaches peak in about three to four months. This is the original, but here's a mild version for people that don't like strong, stinky cheese. This one stays in the curing room only three days rather than seven or 10. We wash it, vacuum pack it, and it continues to age, but it won't pick up the predominant odor or earthiness of the original type. Well, this is the type that people are going crazy for with the Detroit style pizza, the mild sure. one. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, as photogenic as I am in all of my uh, cheesemaker regalia here, I'm also feeling like I really want to taste some of these nuances and the differences. Oh yeah. And you know, taste that, uh, can we call it the Widmer family funk? Or like, uh, yeah. what makes Widmer's bricks so amazing and sought after? Do, do we have a space where we can, we can taste a little Absolutely. bit of this? Absolutely, I'd love you guys to try it. Let's head down to the bar in the corner, uh, the beer house. Yep. Only in Wisconsin do you finish an interview with a master cheesemaker and have them say, to taste the product, let's go down to the corner bar. Yep, I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah. The Pioneer Keg is a great place for cheese curds, too. Good, good food in this place. Really Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Good food. Yep. First of all, what we have is the aged brick, the original type of brick I told you about with the washed rind. Yeah. Where it's pressed with an actual brick. That's this one. This one goes to the curing room seven to ten days. Mm hmm. And uh, you want a piece of it? Yeah. This is the one that the Germans really like. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So they call it German brick. German brick. Mm, that kind of has a funk to it. Like it, it's got a little bit of that Swiss cheese, like nuttiness yeah. to it. Yeah. A very unique flavor. Years ago when people didn't like it real strong, what my grandpa and my dad and uncles would do is wax it before we get the real big rind on. That would, that would retard the uh, aging process because you cut the air off. So later, in the late 50s, 60s, some other guys started making so-called brick cheese, no brick, no salt brine. Sometimes it was Monterey Jack mm. with the same fat and moisture to meet legal definition, but it wasn't brick cheese. So it sold pretty good. Mm -hmm. and people didn't know what real brick was, a lot of them. So we started making this one, late 50s, early 60s. This one goes to the curing room three days instead of seven to 10. It's washed every day, but then it's vacuum packed. To cut the air off, it'll get more and more flavor with time, but it won't pick up predominant odor or earthiness of the original type. And that's this one right over here. That's the original brick? Nope. No, oh, the sorry. white one's original. The white, white one's the yeah. original brick. This is also the one that, um, for some reason, and we don't know social media or how it works, we have people calling from coast to coast for this brick cheese for their Detroit-style pizza. We're sending it to pizzerias all over the United States, New York, California, you name it. <laughs> yep, and that's one of the pizzas that has it on right there. Well, let me try one if I yep. can. Yep. And then he gives me the big corner piece. Yep. What a gentleman. This one's for me. That one's for you. Awesome. What about Junior over there? What is oh, he I'm going to grab a piece here. You're going you're to corner it up. So Detroit-style pizza. Known, actually. Um, and to be fair, I don't know that much about it, but I do know that it has that deep dish crust, kind of like Chicago style pizza does. It's usually in the form of a rectangle or a square, but the real identifying factor that resonates with us as uh, Scani's is the fact that it's using this delicious Wisconsin brick cheese. Yeah, that eats like a meal. It's not Detroit style pizza without brick cheese on. That's the original recipe. I would say within the past five years, we, we have four or five different customers that uh, use our mild brick, not just in Detroit, but throughout the entire United States um, that use the mild brick on their Detroit-style so, pizza. Th these ones we ship directly to, 
And, and then we have distributors that are selling mm -hmm. all over to a lot of them. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity for you all to show me a little bit about your world and, yeah. and share some of the stories that make this cheese so amazing and sought after. My question though is, we can have a conversation about cheese in Wisconsin and we know like this is perfect. I'm at the bar with two of my favorite cheesemakers, new friends, old friends, all the way through. But what does the rest of the world think about this amazing delicacy that is brick cheese? I think we have to hit the road and find out. We've actually just taken the Lake Express Ferry from Milwaukee to Muskegon, Michigan. As someone who's been in the Midwest basically my whole life, this is an experience not to be missed. To get a sunrise in the middle of Lake Michigan as you're circumventing Chicago and Gary and all the wonderful cities that populate the south shore of Lake Michigan is truly fantastic. And one of the things that I like about this is it's kind of that sensation of almost floating across the lake. You can get out, you can walk around on the top deck, they've got good coffee. Uh, it's an awesome way to start the day. But now, we're actually gonna take a little bit of a road trip in Michigan, and we're gonna check out some Detroit-style pizza. Following Widmer's cheese from beautiful Teresa to the mecca of Detroit pizza, Detroit. And I can't wait to see where this adventure takes us. I feel like I'm emerging from a dream. I'm leaving my native homeland of Wisconsin, and I've entered into this magical, mystical world of Michigan. Oh, I'm Nicholas Solkiewski. Uh, we're at Louis Pizza in Hazel Park, Michigan. I'm the grandson of Louis Tertois. We make Detroit-style pizza. We've been open since 1977. The thing with Detroit-style pizza, what we're all about, is we use brick cheese. There is no taste like brick cheese. This just has a special taste. In my opinion, the most important part is you gotta build the pie to have the good cheese wall around the edge. We fill our pizza with sauce, so we, we have a red top. Most other Detroit style places do like three stripes. Buddy's is the leading Detroit style pizza chain in Michigan. They were the original Detroit style pizza restaurant and they ended up expanding and getting big and stuff like that. My grandfather ended up going to Buddy's when he was probably about 16 and worked in the kitchen in there, learned the craft and everything like that. My grandfather left Buddy's uh, because it sold. So after that, he was, I'm done working for people. I, I'm gonna be my own boss and all this stuff. So he ended up buying this in 1976 and we opened in 1977. Pizza is one of the most widely consumed of all foods in the United States. And every region kind of has their own spin on it, but some of the most iconic pies have tricks and secrets that make them specifically unique to the place in which they're created. So today, we're at Louis Pizza in Detroit, and we are getting the lowdown on the 313 style pie from none other than the owner, Nick. So man, I gotta ask, what makes a Detroit style pie a Detroit style pie? Well, what makes a Pie Detroit style is the brick cheese, and in my opinion, the beautiful crispy cheese edge around the whole pie. For our regular cheese and pep, we would take our pepperoni, and we'd go five by seven. I love how you know that you're gonna get 35 pepperoni on every single large pie. But the, the pans, man, like, these are so uh, specific to Detroit style pizza, correct? Yes, very much so. These pans, Originally, they were used as drip trays, odd and end trays, uh, nuts and bolts over at the Big Three. What's the Big Three? The Big Three is uh, Ford, uh, GM, and Chrysler. So you're telling me that this whole rectangular pizza phenomenon that is Detroit style pie, these pans specifically were kind of byproducts of the auto industry. 
Yes. And they had, I would imagine, almost infinite numbers of these hanging around. And that's why we have rectangle pies today. Yep. That's unbelievable. Yep. All right, so we've got our pepperoni on. Show me the cheesing process. During the prep stage, we'll just take a little bit of cheese and we'll take it mostly to the corner. I gotta say, as a kid from Wisconsin, I love your little bit of cheese, man. <laughs> You're like singing my love language right just, now. Just a little bit. Now, yes. I got this cheese on here. Can I put a little bit more cheese on there? Sure. Just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Why is this brick style cheese so important to the Detroit pie? Well, the biggest thing about the brick cheese is its butterfat content. Okay. And the high butterfat content, when it cooks in, the butterfat travels to the top. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you get these little beautiful yellow grease domes a little all over the pie. That's where the flavor is. And so I have to imagine that in some ways you kind of almost fry, yes. like shallow fry the outside of that crust in the oil that's thrown from the cheese itself. Like it's, it's literally cheese bread with the rest of the pizza happening all kind of at once, which makes this thing magical. Very much so. Is this like a traditional Detroit style pie? Yes. Okay. It is. Okay. This is the way that it was originally made. For the longest time, my grandfather didn't offer toppings because he was such a traditionalist. And uh, this was the way it was for the longest time. All right, so we are at the moment that I've been told, that has been explained to me, there's a secret art to saucing a Detroit style pie. Yes. And it has to do with the fact that the sauce is not just like wantonly spread all over the place, spread thin. There is an actual sequence of events that, that needs to happen. Yes. Can you walk me through just a little bit of what that might look like? Very much so. So. I've got my, I've got my spoon. Yes. So what you wanna do is you're gonna take your pizza in one hand, rest it on the edge. Okay. Give it a little angle up, and then you're gonna take your spoon mm -hmm. and add a little 45 degree angle, kinda slide it down, caressing over the cheese, and then slowly turning your spoon at the end of it. You know it's a labor of love when we're talking about caressing a pizza with a little bit of this sauce. Do I want like this thing full or do um, a little less? I'd say about three quarters. You could always add more. You can't really take it off. Okay, so this, that looks that yep. looks about right to you. Yep. I'm gonna start over here, farthest with away. With the wide side. With the wide side, all right. And then slowly. Oh man, that's harder than it looks. <laughs> I just dumped it all in just, one corner. Okay, it's okay. All a, it's all the flow. Let's see, take two. Hey right now. Yep. And then the quicker you go, yeah. the more it'll slightly spread when you okay. go as well. Oh man, that was not a good throw. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Round three. I'm gonna go quick on this one. Three quarters, go. So I feel like I just used double the amount of sauce that you would use. Yeah, that's an extra sauce pie. <laughs> that's an extra sauce pie. Okay. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it, it's just got extra sauce. All right, into the oven it goes. Into the oven. See, and that's how it looks. This is art. Oh, that smells amazing. What? Beautiful. I'm just gonna tell everybody watching at home right now, that little move that he did where he got the spatula underneath one side of it and then just boop, popped it off, that takes years to learn. <laughs> that is art. And if you don't think so, try it the next time you got something like a focaccia coming out of the oven, and you're just like, <laughs> pop, pop, pop. You're not gonna do it like Nick does here. That is skill. Let me give her a cut. This is a cultural phenom. That's right, generations of Detroit style pizza, pizza makers coming through to make this a thing of beauty. Brother, you're like the David Blaine of Detroit style pizza. Those hands just start flying. You don't even know what's happening. These ingredients are flying around and suddenly you end up with a masterpiece. Now I gotta eat. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Motown, this is to you. Thank you. You get that crispy crunch on the bottom of the crust and it's pillowy. 
So you get a little bit of snap, but then it's soft and just supple. It's like you're biting into a cloud. That brick cheese is buttery. It's rich. It's full. You get that familiar texture of, of cheese on a pie, but it's something different. It's a little bit extra. The pepperoni on the bottom, you can tell it like bakes right in and you can see everything in there. That's almost like a cone fee of dough from the fat containing that pepperoni that's perfectly accented by this Detroit style sauce, which I will say may have been a little excessive on my behalf, but at the same time, it's still delicious. Nick. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, I appreciate you. I'm so excited to meet you and to be brought back in here and hear the story of heritage and tradition that you are carrying on, and I have no doubt that your grandfather is smiling on you from above, man. Thank you. I feel like it's gonna come slap me back in the face. So this is, this is the mild. I'm all confused here. Nope, this is the mild. Brick, this is the mild. Mild brick cheese with peppers in it. With the, so like a pepper jack, but it's not a jack, right? Nope, nope. Pepper nope. brick? Pepper brick. A bricker? A bricker, yep. A pecker? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, it's the, uh, the brick and the pepper mixed together. Well, I don't know, good thing I didn't get my beer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pecker cheese, I love it. <laughs> Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. At Organic Valley, our cows make milk with just a few simple ingredients. Sun, soil, rain, and grass, and grass, and grass. Yeehaw! Organic Valley grass milk. Organic milk from 100% grass-fed cows. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends only in Wisconsin since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer's made. Wisconsin's great outdoors has something for everyone. Come for the adventure, stay for the memories. Go wild in Wisconsin. To build your adventure, visit dnr.wi.gov. With additional support coming from The Conscious Carnivore, from local animal sourcing to on-site, high-quality butchering and packaging, The Conscious Carnivore can ensure organically raised, grass-fed, and healthy meats through its small group of local farmers. The Conscious Carnivore, know your farmer, love your butcher. Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is the largest local hunger relief organization in the state. With your help, we ensure your neighbors in need don't have to worry where their next meal may come from. Learn more at feedingamericawi.org. Additional support from the following underwriters. Also with the support of Friends of PBS Wisconsin.